So in this video, I'm gonna go over the best settings or the settings that I recommend on the Samsung S90C. Now there are a couple variants here of the S90C with the 89C, at least in the US, is also a QD OLED. Elsewhere in the world, it may not be. And then we also have S90Cs with Gen 1 QD OLED and some with Gen 2. Now overall, the differences are fairly minor, so these settings should apply for all of them. So starting out, uh, what I like to do is just one, make sure my Apple TV is set up the right way so that the content is either in SDR or HDR like it should be. Now when you first hit the settings button and then press up, you can get to this menu. And then if you go all the way to the right, this will save time in the future. You can edit this list. So I like to move the all settings all the way to the left. That way it's much quicker to get to. Or if you have a Samsung remote with number buttons, if you hit the settings button on that, it'll go straight to your all settings. Also, I like to move the picture mode one option here, uh, second to the left. That way you can also toggle between the picture modes quickly without going into all of the settings. All right, now I'm gonna go through all of the settings menus and go through some of the generic stuff that should be changed before getting into the actual picture settings. And as always with the settings videos, if it's going too quickly, you can change the speed of the video to be slower, or if it's going too slow for you, you can speed it up. You can also pause as needed to apply some of the settings. All right, so the second option down is the sound settings. So here you can pick if you're gonna use the TV speakers, a sound bar or receiver and do your various sound settings. Under expert settings, we can make sure that the HDMI eARC is set to auto, which basically means on. And that is for if you have an eARC capable sound bar or receiver. Then we're also gonna go to digital output audio and then change that to pass through. And that should pretty much be it for audio. So now we can move on to connection, go to external device manager and input signal plus. I like to go ahead and enable all of these. Pretty much the only time you wouldn't is if you're using like an old DVD player that may have an issue if it's turned on or an older cable box. And if you have a switch or receiver and you have multiple devices, including a game system, you can set game mode to auto, which enables the auto low latency mode. Next, we're gonna go to general and privacy and go to power and energy saving and disable the brightness optimization. And you should do that in Filmmaker mode, as if you do it outside of Filmmaker mode, you'll have to do it again in Filmmaker. Then under Panel Care, turn off the Adjust Logo Brightness, as that will dim the entire screen if logos are detected. And the Pixel Shift, you can see how much it is shifting the image when it is toggled, which is enough to be annoying, but not enough to stop any kind of burn-in. Then under Support, you can go to Software Update and go ahead and update to the latest firmware. At least up to the making of this video, there has not been any downsides or visual changes in the S90C or 95C uh, with firmware updates, so you should be good to go. Next, I'm gonna load up some SDR content and Filmmaker I'm going to use for the nighttime SDR and movie for daytime SDR. Now, when it comes to the brightness, that's gonna be up to you and your room. For contrast, you should set it to 38 for SDR content. Other than that, there's really not much you need to change. Now shadow detail, I have plus one on this particular panel, but sometimes zero is better. If you have a plush pattern or some kind of test pattern that you can use to set that properly, I would suggest doing so. Otherwise, if it looks like the black level is raising with plus one, then leave it at zero. And if not, then set it to plus one. I'm gonna switch over to movie, which is our brighter day mode. Generally, I would recommend brightness at 50 and peak brightness at medium for the day mode and then brightness at 40 to 50 with peak brightness off for the night mode. But as I stated, feel free to mess around here with the peak brightness and the brightness setting and try to find what you like for both daytime and nighttime. Just remember to keep contrast at 38 for all of the SDR modes. And then I generally just recommend leaving the BT1886 for gamma alone and the color temp at warm two alone. Under picture clarity settings, this is a personal preference menu, basically. The clear motion is your black frame insertion, which you'll probably have disabled because it darkens the image and causes flicker. Noise reduction is going to be up to you. And if you have, say, a cable box, you might like it on auto. Otherwise, I suggest it off. 
And then when it comes to deep blur, that's for higher frame rate content like sports. And then deep judder is for lower frame rate content like shows and movies. And those are all personal preference. I generally suggest leaving those at zero zero though. All right, now I'm going to switch over to HDR content and we're gonna start with filmmaker mode. Your brightness and contrast in HDR needs to stay at 50. Uh, sharpness at the default zero color. Now in this video, it's at 20 or 21. Uh, the video was shot before finalizing. I would suggest on the S90C setting to 23, which is different than the S95C. Then tint on most panels, G1 is better than zero. Clarity menu settings here work the same as in SDR. Uh, again, I recommend 00, zero because I don't like soap opera effect, but some people like to turn the judder reduction up a couple clicks. Contrast enhancer should stay off. And now in HDR, we have tone mapping options. I suggest static for your accurate filmmaker night mode. And then you can use active in the movie mode for when lights are on. Under the white balance, we're not gonna go into any of that because that varies panel to panel. Gamma now in HDR says ST2084 and we can leave it alone. Now under the color gamut, we're going to switch it to custom and then switch it from P3 to BT2020 and apply the settings at the top of the screen. Now these won't be perfect for every panel, but it should move the colors in a better direction than just setting it to 2020 and leaving it alone. Now we're gonna switch to the movie mode and set up a brighter and by brighter means the EOTF is gonna be lifted to make the overall APL or average picture level brighter. Basically the same settings as in Filmmaker aside from a couple. So as I mentioned earlier, we're gonna set the tone mapping to active, and then we're also gonna set the ST2084 slider down to negative one. Now that is purely optional. Uh, it's just, it can help it not be too overly brightened. However, if you do want that extra brightness, you can leave it at zero. As far as the color, tint, and CMS or BT2020 settings, those are all gonna be the same as in Filmmaker. All right, now we're gonna move into gaming, starting with the Xbox Series X. Now, if you go to the Game Hub, you can see you can move the icons around a little bit and customize it to your liking. Now, in the Xbox, I'm gonna set it to 4K 120 hertz. And then under details, you see pretty much green check marks for everything except for Dolby Vision as expected. Now, if you do have game systems on different inputs than what we were doing earlier, you'll have to turn game mode on depending on the input of where the system is. If game mode is on auto, then when you're on the dashboard of the Xbox, it will be outside of game mode. But once you load up into the HDR game calibration, it will turn on game mode. Now under the game bar, you can see that there's different picture presets. Uh, so if it says standard and it is grayed out, then that means you have game HDR turned on, which is what we want. Now for setting up the Xbox, pull both triggers and bumpers, and you'll get the little menu in the top right, and we want the black screen to be all zeros, which means all the way down. So you can see here that game HDR is on basic where we want it. Brightness and contrast at 50 because we're in HDR, sharpness at zero, contrast enhancer is off, color should actually be at 19. Again, this video was shot before finalizing everything. Uh, the tint at G1 is right though. And make sure color tone is on warm too. Now for the tone mapping settings, static means that there is static tone mapping happening. So there is still tone mapping. Even though the game HDR basic is supposed to be HGIG, uh, there is still tone mapping on top of it. If you set the tone mapping to active, that would just engage dynamic tone mapping, which also lifts the EOTF. So we're gonna leave it in static if you want more accuracy. However, game mode is also lifting the EOTF with static, so we're gonna drop ST2084 to negative one and shadow detail to negative one as well. However, again, if you have a pluge pattern or a brightness pattern, you know, please feel free to use that and set your shadow detail appropriately to your panel. And again, we're gonna set it to BT2020 and apply the settings at the top of the screen, and these are different than the filmmaker and movie modes. Now on the Xbox, again, we're gonna set this darker screen all the way darker. And then if you have a 55 or 65 inch, I would suggest setting this to about 1300 nits. 
uh, those measure around 1050, whereas the 77 is a little bit higher at around 1200 measurably. And again, there's tone mapping added on top. So for the 77 inch, I would probably set it to either 14, maybe 1500. And the reason we go a little bit above what the TV actually measures is so that the APL of the image and the peak highlights isn't pulled down by the tone mapping that's being applied on top of HGIG. All right, now I'm gonna load up a game that is in SDR and on the game bar menu, we have standard and original are the main options here we wanna look at. So if you go to original, you're going to have a far more accurate image. So absolutely in SDR, I recommend original. This is very close to Filmmaker as far as accuracy. Whereas if you are in standard or any of the other modes, the color is wildly inaccurate and requires far more change. So now under the settings of original game mode, we're just gonna turn the contrast down to 38 and then go down to the peak brightness and basically just set that how you want it. So I generally would again recommend medium I think that is plenty bright enough. However, if you do want really bright, then set it to high, and then you can adjust the brightness slider to whatever you are comfortable with. And this will apply to the Xbox, the Nintendo Switch, the PlayStation, whatever, uh, for SDR gaming. Now to switch over to the PlayStation 5. So again, we're going to set up the HDR on the console, just a little bit higher than what the TV is actually measuring. Uh, because of the undefeatable tone mapping. So make sure that game HDR is on basic and all of the other settings are as they should be, which means setting the sharpness from 10 down to zero, setting the color down to 19, setting the tint to G1, making sure the color tone is on warm two and that the tone mapping is on static turning the st2084 and shadow detail to negative one and then changing the color space to bt2020 and applying the game bt2020 cms settings that are at the top of the screen After that, you're gonna set the clicks on the PS5 for HDR. So again, if you have the 55 or 65 inch, you're gonna go all the way down and then count up 17 clicks. And then if you have the 77 inch, you're gonna count up 18 clicks. Then under screen and video, pretty much everything on automatic is fine. And then HDR, I would set to on when supported. And that's going to be it. You shouldn't have to touch anything else going forward other than switching between filmmaker and movie between night and day. And that's if you choose to do that, you don't have to do that. So I hope that all of these settings help you out and that you now can really enjoy the Samsung S90C. This is my basically top pick for 2023 and especially for gamers. There's plenty out there who would say that this TV or any of the Samsungs in gaming is going to be oversaturated or overly bright and so on and not accurate uh, with no way to fix it without calibration at the minimum. And that's really not the case. If you follow the settings in this video as I describe them, then you actually end up with a very accurate gaming mode and all your other modes are also very accurate as well. And I do want to apologize for the long delay in getting this video out. 2023 has been exceptionally busy for me, uh, but now it is finally out and I hope you all enjoyed it. Thank you all for watching and I hope to see you all again in the next one soon.